The Seven Ages of Woman by Agnes Strickland. This is recorded to celebrate the seventh anniversary of LibriVox. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Seven Ages of Woman Thou, whose bold genius in so short a span Marked the seven stages of the life of man, Yet hast omitted in thy gifted page To paint the errors of his consort's age. Lend me thy deathless spirit whilst I show Each change of woman's days through weal and woe. First, soft and helpless, innocent and mild, Smiles in her nurse's arms, the female child. Fresh from her maker's hands, all pure and fair, Unstained by sin, unruffled yet by care, A stranger in this world of ceaseless strife, Lovely and passionless her dawn of life. Next, see her seated at her mother's feet, With eyes upraised, the glance of love to meet, Gay as the birth of hope, all joy and grace, The mind expanding brightens in her face. Speech partially unlocked, in silvery tone, She now essays to make her wishes known. Now to explain her doubtful meaning tries, With mingled eloquence of lips and eyes. Here the first sorrows of the child begin, The slumbering passions waken from within. Each in its turn its growing strength reveals, Anger and love and grief she keenly feels. With graver look and melancholy air, She cons the lesson with reluctant care. The book, the pen, the needle all engage, And form the sorrows of the second stage. A third advances, toils and tasks are past, And life's sweet summer brightly dawns at last. Spring's lovely buds expand to fairest flowers, and hope's enchantment gilds the sunny hours. She, by the standard of her own pure mind, judges the cold, the selfish, and unkind. Earth and its children views in trusting mood, and thinks that, like herself, they all are good. And blind to all its shoals and storms and strife, she enters on the treacherous waves of life. Ah, sweet confiding season over your bloom, Why should the blight of falsehood cast a gloom? Over those high fillings and that heart's warm glow, A chilling dam the cruel world will throw. The noblest virtues which that mind adorn, The false will mock, the wicked treat with scorn. The crowd shall mark with cold invidious gaze, and those will trample who should help to raise, Till from the freezing glance of heartless pride Its fair endowment's slighted worth will hide. This in the lovely dayspring of her youth Shall cloud its sunshine and abuse its truth. O oh, bitterer far, perchance, is doomed to prove The venomed shafts of unrequited love. At first, by slow degrees, her gentle heart Admits the poison, nor perceives the smart. She loves the moonlight and the evening hour, The river's margin and the forest bower. There, wrapped in musings, she delights to stray, And nurse the dream that steals her soul away. All else to her is idle, dull, and vain, Pleasure insipid and exertion pain. Too oft is hers, by strangling pangs oppressed, to hide the thorn that rankles in her breast. With dying hopes to combat thronging fears, And find a sad relief in gushing tears, Alas, she learns that cruel man can turn From hearts like hers and each warm feeling spurn, That he unmoved can all her anguish view, And treat with cold contempt a love so true, So fond as hers, which worlds could never buy, and kings themselves to share might vainly sigh. She weeps in secret, and she sits alone, Pale as the sunless day whose hope is gone, Absorbed in silent heart-consuming woe, Reckless of all around, above, below. 
this cannot last and time with noiseless wings sweeps over her bosom and allays its stings and other hopes and calmer feelings brings so pass the three first stages of her life a fourth succeeds and sees her now a wife yet not by chance of him who taught her heart the earliest sigh and caused its keenest smart forgetful of the wrongs which man has given when linked to man she makes his home a heaven his nurse in sickness and his joy in health his aid in poverty his pride in wealth her heart the solace where his wounded mind flies for relief and finds it of a kind where when all fail him he can still confide its faith like gold more pure the more tis tried though storms without on every side increase they cannot mine the house of love and peace which on the rock of duty firmly stands while strife and folly perish on the sands but now a period still more blessed shall come and crown with joy the calm delights of home the sweetest era of the female life which makes a mother of the happy wife and adds a cement to that holy tie for human happiness ordained on high when round her board the olive branches spring and love's dear claimants to their mother cling and she beholds beneath her anxious eyes her lovely hopes in fair succession rise the youngest cradled on her fostering breast sighs its delight and softly sinks to rest another darling with bewitching grace hides in the slumberer's robe his cherub face then archly wanton full of infant glee he laughs aloud and peeps mamma to see a third more active boldly climbs her chair and pleads his right each fond caress to share whilst a fair girl who hangs upon her arm rich in each playful wile and early charm in lisping tones her earnest wish has told that she sweet baby on her lap may hold the happy mother on her infant train gazes with transport which amounts to pain a smile of rapture on her lip appears but her soft eyes overthrow with tender tears tears which even gazing seraphs might approve the holy weepings of maternal love Blessed in her duties, calmly glide away the busy hours of life's meridian day, till time advancing of the dial flings a darker shade and that sad epoch brings. That mournful stage of comfortless distress, which sees her now in widowed loneliness, consumed by sorrow and oppressed with gloom, she sighs for refuge in the friendly tomb yet as her glance upon her children falls she starts in anguish and that wish recalls from mingled feelings now her eyes overflow the mother's softness with the widow's woe her bosom thrilling with an interest dear which robs of bitterness the falling tear her rebel heart sinks lowly and her mind bows to the will of heaven in grief resigned slowly but sure life sands declining flow in ceaseless cause what now remains to show of woman's days when all has passed away that charmed the young the thoughtless and the gay and the fair fabric taught us in decay when youth and health and strength and beauty's beam appear like traces of some distant dream of which remembrance almost seems to fade even from herself who fondly once surveyed those bright possessions and in raptured tone exclaiming exulting these are all my own now reft of all faint feeble pressed with age we mark her feelings in the last great stage the feverish hopes the fears the cares of life no more oppress her with their torturing strife the restless tumults of her early day have passed with beauty and with youth away she like some traveller who beholds the sun sinking before him ere his journey's done regrets not now to lose its noontide power but hails the coolness of the evening hour and fills her holy and divine repose rest on her spirit in the twilight close 
she in her children's children tastes again maternal pleasure and maternal pain to them imparts the knowledge years have given and points her hopes to soar with hers to heaven what though her eyes are dark in age's night serener brighter burns the inward light guiding the spirit by its sacred ray to cast its mortal thralls and curse away and wait its summons to eternal day end of the seven ages of woman by agnes strickland